Good morning. Welcome to day 21 of this 31-day journey through the book of Proverbs. Each day we look at a new chapter of wisdom. Today is chapter 21. For me, uh, three of the verses that stood out the most uh, that, that just kind of jumped off the page to me were verses 2, 3, and 21. So let me read those and talk about them for a few minutes. <clears throat> verses 2 and 3 say, People may be right in their own eyes, but the Lord examines the heart. The Lord is more pleased when we do what is right and just than when we offer sacrifices. So he starts with this, people may be right in their own eyes. This is how we see ourselves. This is our view of me. This is your view of you. And we may think because of what we see, uh, we're right, that, that things are good, just. Uh, but the Lord examines the heart. Now, God's not acting as a cardiologist here, physically examining the heart as, <clears throat> as, a, as a, a physician would do. But it's beyond just a view. The word's examined, right? He's taking his time. And he's looking at our heart. This is the figurative heart. This is the heart that's the seat of our emotions, our desires. It's what drives and motivates us. <clears throat> it's who we really are. Because our heart can say one thing and our actions can be very different. So we can look right and not be right. But God sees our heart. So he sees who we really are. And, he, and, and King Solomon continues that, you know, that thought with, The Lord is more pleased when we do what is right and just than when we offer him sacrifices. Right? Sacrifices... Uh, in, the, in Old Testament times were a response to sin. So we needed to make things right with God. I did wrong, so now I'm going to offer you something um, to offset that according to his law. But he's more pleased when we do what is right and just, right? Just do what's right. You don't have to offer the sacrifice. You don't have to go through the whole process of feeling the guilt and the shame. If we just live right, if we allow God to change our desires, to change our heart, to be more like his. <clears throat> this is interesting because <clears throat> King Solomon's experience with his father, David, King David, who had some, you know, very high highs and some very low lows. And, and one of, you know, probably the lowest point he found himself in was after he uh, had an affair with his neighbor Bathsheba and she got pregnant. And then to cover up that sin, that wrong, he had her husband killed. So now he becomes not only an adulterer, but a murderer as well. And I can't imagine that, uh, you know, that, that King David is teaching his son his wisdom from his own mistakes. And here King Solomon pens this out, that you may be right in your own eyes, but the Lord examines the heart. And the Lord is more pleased than what we do when, it, when we do what is right and just and when we offer him sacrifices. Because if we go back to what David writes in, in the Psalms, we see his heart because we're, we're going we're gonna to fail at times. We're going to fall. We're not going to do what is right and just. <clears throat> And God doesn't want to sacrifice from us. He wants us to live right. But when we do fail, then what do we do? And this is uh, David's psalm when he was confronted about his, his sin, his rebellion from God. And he says in verse 10 of Psalm 51, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal, a right spirit within me, right? Our hearts get dirty. We make the wrong decisions when we live apart from him, when we go our own way. And we, we're, we're being disloyal to the one who's always been loyal to us. And always will be. And when we're wrong, only God can make us right. So he comes to God with this psalm, this song, this prayer of creating me a clean heart, God, right? I've, I've allowed my heart to get dirty. I've done things I shouldn't have done. And only you can clean it. And then we jump down to verses 16 and 17 of, of Psalm 51. And he says this as he continues this thought. You do not desire a sacrifice or I would offer one, right? This, this is very similar to what Solomon is saying. He's carrying kind of this thought on. He says, you don't want a burnt offering. This isn't what you want. You, the sacrifice you desire is a broken heart, a broken spirit. You won't reject a broken and repentant heart, oh God. So what does God want when we fail, when we allow our hearts to get dirty, when we walk away from him? He doesn't want what we can offer him. He wants who we are. He wants us to just be real and transparent and authentic because he already knows. He just wants us to admit that we're wrong and that we need him. And that this heart will be dirty unless he cleans it. So he doesn't want what we have, the things that we have. He wants us. He wants you and me. He wants the real you and me. And until we come to this place like David did, where he says, you will not reject a broken and repentant heart, which is the, the spirit that David comes to God in. Um, until we come to God with a broken and remorseful heart, it, it's not until then that God can start the rebuilding process. And until we admit we're broken, and then God can start to rebuild. 
So we jump to 21 of, of Proverbs 21. And he's, he writes, whoever pursues righteousness and unfailing love will find life, righteousness, and honor. So if we do, you know, what God is calling us to do, if we pursue righteousness and unfailing love, uh, living to his standard, right? We will find life, righteousness, and honor. Pursue it. This is what Jesus did. He pursued righteousness and, and unfailing love. Jesus came and did the will of God. He came to do the will of God. He came to live a righteous life. And he did it with an unconditional love that never failed and never wavered and still hasn't and it never will. So we can have life, righteousness, and honor if we pursue righteousness and unfailing love. John 10, 10, Jesus said, I came to give them life and to give them to the fullest. He's talking about this life now that we can experience the best that God has for us and, and, and that he promises eternal life. And that when we leave planet Earth, that our soul lives on and only through Jesus can we have life to the fullest now and eternal life. And he says, if we pursue righteousness, we find righteousness, right? This is not... Um, a pursuit that's going to fail. If we pursue righteousness, the God's standard, right? His his, his level of, of a character that he's calling us to, we find it. If we try to do it, if we pursue it, we we get it. We, we obtain it. Um, and then he says, and, and honor. So we can have life, righteousness, and honor. If, if we don't pursue righteousness and we do our own things, this is what David experienced. It's not honor we experience. It's humiliation. It's shame. It's guilt. And only through the work of Jesus, can we come to God and say, God, create in me a clean heart. My heart is dirty, and I want to pursue. I want my heart to be changed. I want what you want, and you want righteousness and unfailing love. And if I pursue those things, then I will find and have life, righteousness, and honor. So I hope that this encourages you today. I look forward to Proverbs 22 tomorrow. Thanks for joining me.